So continuing on, I guess you had mentioned rivaroxaban in there. So um, in your opinion, maybe how and when should practitioners use uh, rivaroxaban in BTE uh, prevention? Yeah, so I, I think this represents, again, a, a brand new option um, uh, for, for hospital-based practitioners. Uh, again, rivaroxaban is now FDA approved as, a, as of last year. So it can be used both in hospital, but also, and I think important, it can be used in the post-hospital discharge setting uh, because previous data has shown us that um, uh, low molecular heparins are, are not ideal agents uh, to be used in the post-discharge setting to prevent throm thrombosis. Patients just don't want to self-inject for a month with, with needles to prevent um, you know, a clot. So I think now practitioners have you know, uh, uh, more drugs in their armamentarium, both the standard agents such as unfractionated heparin and lone liquid heparin, but importantly also the, uh, the DOAX, direct oral anticoagulants to prevent thrombosis in, in medically ill patients. Importantly also in the post-hospital discharge period where right now the standard of care is actually doing nothing uh, for the vast majority of patients. So less than 1% of patients are getting any type of post-discharge uh, prophylaxis. Um, and so my final question for you is, you had also mentioned earlier, um, you touched on COVID-19 and kind of how that's thrown everything into flux. Um, so how has COVID-19 impacted um, your patients and the way that you treat and uh, treat or prevent or, you know, stratify for VTE? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and we're all very um, COVID sensitive these days, aren't we? Uh, so, so really COVID has heightened uh, the thrombotic risk in hospitalized patients, especially with uh, sepsis and pneumonia. Uh, data has shown, uh, and I think consistently has shown that uh, COVID pneumonia patients are about two to threefold increased risk of thrombotic events compared to even um, sepsis pneumonia patients in the pre-COVID era. So I think it, it, it has heightened physician awareness of, of thrombotic complications in hospitalized patients. And, and then I think some quirky things within COVID, as I mentioned, this phenomenon of in situ, uh, thrombosis and this phenomenon of, of thromboinflammation has really made us think hard about uh, management paradigm. So one of the things we, we, we really learned is that uh, a biomarker that has really uh, fairly recently been added to some of these uh, VTE risk tools, namely an elevated D-dimer, um, is a very useful tool to stratify COVID patients into high risk categories for both uh, bad outcomes as well as uh, throm thromboembolic complications. So um, what we've done is, is we've incorporated an elevated D-dimer in all of our risk stratification paradigms. And also we've incorporated uh, the use of lone liquid heparin in, in hospital um, in these patients routinely, as well as in high risk COVID patients, uh, we routinely now give them post-discharge extended uh, thromboprophylaxis, usually with, with rivaroxaban. So, uh, and, and we're collecting data as we speak and we'll be presenting at the American Society of Hematology Conference in a few weeks, some of our post-discharge data in a very large cohort of patients. So I think a lot of um, avenues for, for research, but what, what it's really done is made us think hard about thrombotic risk in hospitalized uh, medically ill patients, especially with sepsis and pneumonia. Okay, great. Um, so that's all I had for you today. Um, I, if, is there anything here that I didn't cover that you think would be interesting to add um, to, to the conversation or is this, uh, are you satisfied with <laughs> you know, what you got there? Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, in terms of uh, future avenues of, of research, what we really need to, I think, now show is the effectiveness of, of what I mentioned, a multimodal um, management and treatment approach to thrombotic disorders that includes, uh, again, the use of validated VT risk tools, such as the improved tool, the use of um, uh, potential biomarkers, such as D-dimer, the use of incorporation of our knowledge in, into uh, physician workflow, using things like electronic alerts within um, EHRs and, um, and the use of now newly established uh, agents such as rivaroxaban in, in managing these patients, not just in the hospital, but importantly in the post-hospital discharge period, which really represents a new paradigm of care. Excellent, excellent. Um, so again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today.